Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last video, we talked about the database design for Udemy clone application. Now in this video, we are going to baseline a code and we are going to understand the tools and all these things which we are using in this application. So like what all the tools, technologies and uh, how we are going to baseline and structure our applic application. What I decided that we are going to use these uh, monorepo. So this is a simple monorepo, let's say. And if you are following my other uh, videos, then you already understand what is a monorepo and what I'm building because I'm using the same setup for each and every full stack clone application. So here is I'm going to put apps. Here I'm going to put packages. And if you want to also have infra, because these days we are also putting infra as a code, right? So either you are using Terraform, so AWS CDK, you can put your own uh, overall infrastructure inside our code base also. So this is your packages. These are your applications. So everything I'm going to have inside this one single monorepo and applications can be all these different services will be as subfolders. So all these folders will be here. So here in the applications, we can have all the other directories like, okay, I do have a, a code service, catalog service, all these will come here. And then similarly, we can keep building. So these all the n number of services we can keep adding here. I will just put a dot, dot, dot. And here, all these packages, all the reusable packages, database module, config module, a logger module, AWS S3 module. Maybe you, we are using uh, RabbitMQ, Kafka, and uh, NestJS microservices. So we can build all these reusable modules, which can be inside of packages. And then these packages can be used across all these applications, which we are building in the core service, in the all the other services. So it's like we are trying to achieve a reusability by inducing these packages. And you already know the advantage of using PNPM workspace. Without even publishing these packages, we can use them across any application in the workspace. So that is the, the, the important advantage of using the PNPM workspace. And we are using NX tooling, which is helping us to automate all these uh, commands. So NX is a monorepo tool and we are using package-based monorepo using PNPM workspace, okay? And uh, this is pretty much the setup looks like. And what we are going to do is we are going to look into this PNPM workspace, like workspace exists for NPM, PNPM, yarn. We are using PNPM, so we need to create this PNPM workspace.yml file in our root. First of all, we can initialize this repository. So what I will do is uh, PNPM get in it. And then pnpm init. It will give me the package JSON structure, and then I will create a new file containing the name package and pnpm workspace.yml, and just specify what all folders you wanted to put inside your workspace. So I'm going to have apps. I'm going to have packages. So if you guys feel like okay, you don't understand the monorepo concepts and all, don't worry. There is a separate playlist for it. But in each and every application, I'm using this uh, workspace, PNPM workspace, which is really useful when you are using, when you are building a lot of services, front and back end services, and you wanted to put all those things inside a single repository, where you can also have a dependency like uh, some uh, database module can be injected in all the applications of NestJS. So I can isolate that database package outside inside packages. So all these reusability we all already understand because. If you are following my other playlist of full stack clone, I'm just adopting the same strategy. But here I need to cover it because if somebody is new watching this, he will go banana. But if you already know, you can skip this and just go to the next video. And here I will just create a package JSON, pnpm workspace.yml. So I have apps and packages. So we'll create these apps and packages. And then you already know like what all dependencies you wanted to put at the root because this is a PNPM workspace. All the common dependencies, you can move it to, to the root of the project and then you can start creating the services like let's say the code service. 
right then uh, let's say upload service or file service this can be a service standalone independent service talking to a postgres and managing the data and inside packages you can have n number of packages like aws s3 so i do have another libraries for the notification aws s3 not s2 and then packages let's say app database app config app logger all these packages you can put and then you will be just adding the nest js modules inside these and then you can use those inside a package json so of course service file manager service they would be linked automatically so what you need to do you just need to specify the package version let's say you will be initializing this with the pnpm in it and you will be building some typescript package and here this is a core service i'm just creating a empty package json and then i will go to the top and you will try to see what dependencies we need at the root so what how to baseline so you just need to do because we are not building a service here we are just baselining the mono repo so what all dependencies we need at the top we need commit lint commit gen typescript uh, eslint parsers and uh, husky jest nx i mean i already have a package json i can just copy paste so that would be easier for you and i will explain each and every dependency to every one of you so here it is like a root and here you can see the dependency tree so eslint all the eslint dependencies nothing new we use it in each and every project commit conventions and typescript eslint parser because we are writing typescript and these dependencies are all for commit gen commit convention this plugin is actually help will help us to write a nice and clean commits this will help us to enable the eslint with the typescript and just for the tests nx for because nx we are using for mono repo prettier and then there are there are prettier plugins to run the prettier on this uh, svelte we don't have pretty and next year we are going to have because this is a mono repo so if it is you have a next year swelt swelt kit all the root level eslint or prettier plugins will be added here so here you can say next js is fine eslint and then what we will do is pnpm install so what it will do is it will install all the root level dependencies pnpm install and I'm using uh, Node.js 18 version. You can use the latest version. You can use NVM to switch the Node version from 16 to 14, 14 to 16, and 16 to version 18. Okay, these are my root level dependencies. Nice and clean. I don't have any application level dependencies here. All about, okay, how, what all dependencies like Husky for creating hooks, commit hooks. So whenever you add a commits, you should be able to run the Husky to run the prettier on the whole code base. Then we have a jest for writing the test cases. So we are going to introduce a jest config. And jest config is like a simple, plain and simple template. Jest config is going to look for uh, the .ts and .js file. It is going to collect coverage from all these files. And then Docker is actually a placeholder we can put. Docker file and Docker compose file. Sorry, Docker compose and override. So what all, uh, because I'm going to use Docker only for having the Postgres database in my application. So we need a Postgres database for a user service, enrollment service, uh, order service, core service, catalog service. All these services are using, will be using Postgres. So I will just spin up different containers for each and every service. This is pretty much uh, we have for applications packages. Rest you can have this prettier config, ESLint config and all these we can add in our code base. So uh, if you look into what is the use of all these configurations, ESLint ignore, ESLint RC get ignore. I will try to explain. I, I hope everybody in JavaScript, uh, if you are a JavaScript developer, you already know. ESLint ignore, run, do not run ESLint on these files. ESLint RC, this, this is like a JavaScript ESLint parser. This is looking for all these rules. You can suppress a particular rule if you, if you don't want that. 
then prettier rc and prettier ignore uh, th these files i'm copying from my existing project you don't need to write them from the scratch nothing important ignore the prettier for all these files like node modules build a dist folder we are going to run the prettier only on the source code and these are the prettier rules we have okay then nx because we are using nx console so we need to introduce nx.json and we already have this package and i can see nx console select the workspace and i will say udemy.tkserver.com and whatever the applications currently we don't have anything so this nx console is initialized here okay docker we already have package package lock just config prettier prettier rc and you can also create another folder for managing the infra because i think we are going to use some aws components here so how we are going to orchestrate them how we are going to build them so this is pretty much about the baseline I think git ignore is missing. That's why it is showing 10,000 commits. I already have it. Okay, it's sorted now. So this is a baseline. Now what we will do is we will try to uh, regroup the discussion and we will bootstrap what we are going to build first. Uh, next JS console or the React console. I think the, the React JS landing page and start building some of the services like file upload service, course service, catalog service, uh, user enrollment service, uh, all these services we can start building using Nest.js.